Welcome to the indie lot. You are the writer of your film. You're the director of your film. You are the cinematographer, the mics guy, the lights guy. You're doing it all. And on top of that, you're also the actor. And that's really not a bad way to start because then you uh, don't have to worry about directing other people. You just get to focus on learning how to work your angles and tell your story through the eyes of the camera. In this module, we want to talk about camera movement. We want to talk about motion in your shot. So if you're all by yourself, you're the one doing it all, how do you get motion into your shot? That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> Hello? I think you have the wrong number. It's okay. We're continuing our theme of just learning how to tell story through the eyes of the camera. Uh, and we're talking about camera movement. Now, why is camera movement important? It's important because oftentimes it's used to help convey a sense of emotion or feeling. It can be used to reveal things in a scene that were previously not seen. And if anything, it just adds another dimension to the film. Otherwise, uh, you know, all the shots would just be these flat, non-moving shots what you want to be careful of, though, is you don't want to end up having too much motion in, in your shots. Uh, there's a time and a place for having no movement and having that camera just sitting on a tripod. And there's a time for a handheld shot, which is going to create movement because of just the natural shake that's going to take place as you're holding your camera or moving with it. And then there is the movement that you get from a slider um, or some kind of uh, fly cam where you're you have a balanced shot you're using some kind of a gimbal you know to stay stabilize your shot but anyways you're, you're doing that though because you're creating motion in your shot and there's reasons for that so again how do we accomplish that in our situation where we're doing it all here we are in davinci resolve and this is our timeline for the the edit that i did uh, of the film wrong number all of these shots Okay, are still shots, cameras placed on a tripod, and there's no, there's no camera movement, okay, so no motion within the shots. This one right here, you can see there is movement, and that was because I was sitting there literally holding the camera in my hands, and so um, that was just camera shake uh, from the natural movement of, uh, of my body at the time. So anyways, but the rest of these are on a tr locked off on a tripod and no camera movement. So what we've been saying is that camera movement can help, uh, again, it can help create or, or support uh, an emotion that you might be wanting your viewer to pick up from your, from your character. But it's also just, again, another dimension, another layer, if you will, of dimension that can be added to the film to uh, make it a little more interesting. Anyway, so how do we start adding motion to this? Now, the first thing I want to say before we do is I want to just say that when we're adding motion the way we're about to, you want to do small motion, subtle. You don't want big, fast movements, usually. It just depends, I guess, on your film and in the shot and what you're trying to convey. But generally speaking, at least for the type of shot uh, that we're going to apply movement to, we're going to do it in very small movements, okay? We're going to add motion to this shot right here, and we're going to add motion to this shot right here so this shot and this shot all right so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my uh, timeline uh, my scrubber at the beginning of this shot and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play Hello. okay so in a shot like this uh, a phone calls coming in and uh, the character is answering the phone 
the the push in kind of would give a feel at least in my mind it gives this feel or a sense that there's kind of mystery we don't know who the phone call is from and you know we're pushing in on our actor as they're answering the phone and so that's what we're going to do here well, let's go ahead and create motion on this shot now uh this isn't a lesson on how to use davinci any editor that you use is going to be able to do this kind of stuff you'll just have to figure out how to do it in whatever editor that you're using so you're going to need software of course for your post-production to put all this stuff together all right so let's jump back into this so i've got my uh image selected and I've clicked on the inspector tab here and now I can see the properties of the clip that's selected. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work on simulating the push in. If there was a cameraman working this camera and he was going to do a push in, all right, the closer the camera gets, the larger or the more of the frame I'm going to fill in. And so in a sense, it's kind of like zooming in, right? So if I, with that clip selected, begin to move my zoom, you can see, in a sense, it's kind of a simulated push-in. Right now, it's really two-dimensional. It's not three-dimensional. In a real push-in, of course, perspective in the image itself would change, you know, because the objects would be filling a different part of the image based upon where the camera was positioned. All right, because this is just a flat image, I'm just expanding the image we're not really getting true perspective and that's another reason why when you're doing this kind of simulation of movement and motion in your shot you want to make it subtle you want to make it small so that uh, you know because of that very reason we're not getting true perspective shift we're just making the image larger okay so uh let's go ahead and work on that I'm going to go ahead and start it like right about here where I'm reaching for my phone. Let's let's try right there. And we're going to we're going to change of course the the amount of zoom and we're going to change the positioning uh, in our x and y coordinates, okay? And together this is going to give us the the simulation of a push in. And again, it's going to be subtle, not too big. So I'm going to start with the zoom. Actually, before I do that, with my scrubber set at that frame, I'm first going to go ahead and activate these keyframes in both of those channels. And so now, uh, what we're saying is start the push-in, if you will, or this fake motion, start it on this frame at these positions, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring my scrubber to right about where I answer the phone. We'll, we'll stop right there, okay? And as I zoom in, you can see DaVinci creates me a keyframe. And so I'll, I'll start with this. There's possibly going to be a lot of tweaking. Who knows? As I've zoomed in now on the image, you can see the top of my head is cut off. So in the Y position, so now X controls left to right, Y controls up and down. If I go left, that's going to be negative y if i go right it'll be positive y and to move the image down i want to go left or in the negative y direction so see here if i go too far of course i get uh, the top of my image not at the top of the frame i don't want to make sure i don't do that so i'm going to go ahead and just do something like that right there okay so now if i put the scrubber at the beginning of that clip let's go ahead and have a look here see how we like this Hello. You know what? That's good enough for me at this point. That looked pretty decent. Of course, it's it's all up to your eye as you're doing it and setting it and how it feels to you. But hopefully you're getting it and understanding the basic gist of what I'm saying. We're selecting the image, we're zooming in on it, and we're resetting its XY coordinates uh, by keyframes. And so we're animating the zooming and the moving of the image to simulate the effect of motion. Now, again, because we're, we're doing this in a two-dimensional image, again, be careful not to overdo it and go too big because you're not getting true perspective changes, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. In the next image I want to do some motion on is this one here as well. I'm going to do this one, though, a little bit differently uh, than than the previous one. I'm going to go ahead on the very first part of it. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah. Now, again, you know, let me, I didn't say this before, but let me just tell you why we're part of what we're accomplishing when we're zooming. We're pushing the edges of both top, bottom, left, and right. We're pushing those edges out of view of the frame. Okay. 
And so that gives us a little bit of movement or a little, it gives us space where we can move our image left or right and still keep the entire frame filled in. All right. So I want to go ahead now that I've, let's go ahead and add a keyframe to these channels. All right. So I've zoomed in and now again, I want to bring my image down. So I'm going to go negative Y. All right. I don't want to go too far. I'm going to go just like that. Okay. And then I also want to also move the, See which way am I gonna wanna? Am I gonna wanna come this way? Yeah, we'll we'll do it this way. All right, so I'm gonna go negative in the X, and I'm going to put that right on the edge, right about there. Okay, and I'm gonna just go ahead and simulate movement across this entire image. So I'm gonna just do a left to right movement. Let me go there, and now I'm going to bring this all the way across. We'll see how fast that motion is that it creates. So let's go to the beginning of the clip, see what we got. I think you have the wrong number. It's okay. Ah, I like it. Uh, maybe a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of adjustment, but for the sake of this training, that's good enough. So now let's go ahead and let's put our scrubber at the beginning and let's just watch this whole thing. Probably, uh, as I'm looking back at this, let's go ahead and put this there, and let's bring... That movement was maybe a little too fast for me, so I want to just see what this looks like. I think you have the wrong number. I like that right there better. It's okay. Alright, so there you have it. This is how we can simulate motion. We don't have a cameraman that can move the camera for us. But with a little bit of planning and, and of course, the know-how that you can do some of this in post, uh, you can simulate camera motion uh, in your shot. Now, again, let's uh, be careful not to overdo it, not to make it too big. And, it, and again, it has to do with because we're, we're shifting and we're moving. We're zooming and shifting left to right or top to bottom, a two-dimensional image. And so... We're not going to get the same perspective changes and perspective shifts that we get in an actual push in with the camera, you know, like as if it was on a dolly or something like that, okay, uh, or on a slider, okay. And so again, you want to keep your motion small, you want to keep it subtle, but that little bit can take your image a long way and just create a dimension there that's just overall more satisfying and pleasing to the viewer. So I, I hope that last segment there can be an inspiration to you. You have the ability to add motion into a shot uh, just through using the, the, the trick that we just did in our, our editing software. What you want to be careful with, though, is not to go into every shot and add motion all over the place. Think of it kind of like seasoning food. Uh, you're preparing a meal and you use spices and seasonings to enhance the flavor of the food or create a unique flavor. But the thing is, is if you use too much, you actually cause the meal to be overpowered by, by the seasoning that's being used. And it can ruin the meal, actually. And so think of motion in your shots being the same way. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Try to think about what is the emotion that you're trying to convey in the shot and would motion of that shot help enhance that emotion, okay? And let your motion be seasoning in your film, okay? But don't overpower your film with just throwing motion everywhere. So thank you for being here in this episode and we'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And also, would you consider sharing?